Ken Duke from FTR here, and we are here at the Bassmaster Classic 2019 in Knoxville, Tennessee, talking to some manufacturers that have been involved in a lot of Bassmaster Classic victories. They call it the Super Bowl of bass fishing. It's certainly the biggest tournament and competition in the sport, and the Expo is the biggest consumer show in our industry. What is a Bassmaster Classic worth? It's the crown jewel for tournament fishermen, and they'll, the winner will walk away with a check for $300,000, but what does it mean to the company that made the rods, the reels, the lines, or the lures involved in the wind? We're gonna find out. Hey folks, we're here with Jeremy Albright, brand manager of Berkeley, and uh, I got a tough question for you, Jeremy. Okay. We're here at the Bassmaster Classic, and very few companies have been involved in as many classic victories as pure fishing. Sure. Whether it's the Berkeley Soft Plastics in 2007, 2009, and so forth, or whether it's uh, you know brands like Trilene and Strand, which are 15 classics each. Right. What is a Bassmaster Classic victory worth to a company like yours? You know, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where it helps us create a a platform to build a product line from. Um, you know, it's every angler's got to figure out fishing for themselves in their area. But like the Cheer Croft, for example, we do have two victories on that. But it helps us, you know, spread the word for the brand and helps us be able to build on top of that. So now we have multiple colors, multiple sizes. We can build different, you know, different versions of that bait, and it becomes a mainstay in the angler's tackle box. And that's really what it means means to us. I think I first heard about the Cheer Croft. Really became aware of it when Boy Duckett used sure. it to catch the bulk of his fish, sure. bigger fish at least, in the 2007 Classic on his way to a win. Obviously, you know, when, when people ask me how much is this worth or that worth, my answer is usually it depends. And one of the big things it depends upon is the marketing ability of the company behind the product. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys are, are basically second to none in that area. How difficult is it to get mobilized when you know that one of your guys is going to be there in the hunt? Depends on how well we plan for it. So we've got some guys this year fishing uh, something that's going to launch at ICAST this year. If they win, we're ready to pull the trigger and get after it. And if not, then we're still set up. So it really depends on how well you plan ahead. Just if you plan to fail or fail to plan, you know, how, you know how that works. So, but we're ready to go and we try to plan ahead and develop baits for specific scenarios. Well, folks, I know one company and one guy who is really hoping that Jordan Lee can pull off three in a row oh this year. <laughs> and this is Jeremy Albright. We're here in the Berkeley booth at the Bassmaster Classic Expo. Hey folks, I'm here at the Bassmaster Classic Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee. I got with me one of the all-time greats, Mr. Mark Davis, a three-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, the 1995 Bassmaster Classic Champion. Mark, we're in the Strike King booth, longtime sponsor of yours, a company that has won more Bassmaster Classics. Their lures have won more Classics than any other brand. What does that mean to a company? You know, Ken, it, it, it means obviously a great deal, but I think depending upon the lure, and the uniqueness of the lure and it, how it relates to, you know, if, if it's if it's just say, for instance, if it's just a jig, eh, it's good. But if it's a unique lure like, uh, you know, uh, something kind of new, like Strike King's got the yeah, new- uh, Thunder Cricket. Thunder Cricket and, and, you know, new crankbaits that come out all the time. So it's, it's huge no matter what lure category, but if it's something unique, it, then it's a home run that's out of the park. So it, it, it depends. It's always good. Like I said, always good. But but depending on, you know, how unique that lure is, it can be just phenomenal. And, uh, and of course, classic, classic wins are, are huge, no doubt. But, you know, any tournament wins, well, you know, big, big national tournaments, that, that's really what, you know, it's funny, a, a lure can come along. I, I've had lures in my hand. And I, when I get them in my hand, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. And, and, they, and they usually are. And no one wins a tournament with them. And the public doesn't, they don't know. I mean, it's there on the shelf. They're, yeah, they, they don't buy it. They never give it a try. But you, then you let a guy like me win a big event on it, like a classic. And then, then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I need to try that. And then once they... And there's and, and the, the, another interesting thing is there's been a lot of really good lures developed over the years that had a tournament been won on them and had I mean the, the pros knew how good they were but the public never figured it out and at the end of the day unfortunately if they don't sell guess what they're gonna get discontinued 
And then Mark Davis kind of hoards them all and he uses them to do really well in tournaments but not talk about them occasionally. Now, occasionally. <laughs> you're one of the most versatile guys in the history of tournament bass fishing and you know, no matter what it takes, you're a guy who we all know is going to find a way to compete. Um, what are you excited about? What trends are you seeing in the bass market right now that have you excited? I think the, tri the swim bait category probably has me the most excited and it's, uh, I, I really think we're just scratching the surface right now. I think there's some things coming that's going to be depth control and, and things like that that's uh, really going to be cutting edge. They're, they're, they're not out there yet. We're playing with it, but it's not, it's not available yet. Now that you're fishing on the Bass Pro Tour and those Major League Fishing style rules, uh, a lot more emphasis is on numbers of fish. As long as they're a pound, they count. Uh, I'm looking to see that maybe create an additional uh, boost to the finesse marketplace, especially things like the Ned Rig. What do you think about that? Yeah, if you go back and look at, uh, we've been doing these MLF events now for quite a few years, and on a tough body of water, just not unlike any tournament where you're keeping five. Uh, finesse plays a big part when it's tough, but you know, you go to quality lakes or quality fish, you can catch a lot of little ones, but the guy that keeps catching those three and four pounders is gonna beat you, so. But you're right, you're right. That game does require, it's all about how do I get my next bite? And you know, you, you may be fishing for a three pounder or a four pounder or a five pounder, but if you catch a couple pound and a halfers on the way, they all add, they all add, makes a big difference. So, especially when it's tough. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to see things like the Ned Rig and all those. I'll, I'll tell you, I've got a boat full of that stuff right now. I mean, I've got all that stuff and little little jig hits. And there's a lot. I think we're going to see a lot of improvements along those lines. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, folks, you heard it from one of the all-time greats, Mr. Mark Davis. Hey folks, I'm here with Kurt Arakawa of Daiwa. We're at the Bassmaster Classic Expo. And Kurt, as you well know, no company in the rod and reel business has won as many Bassmaster Classics as Daiwa. Daiwa leads the way among all manufacturers. What do you, what do you attribute that to success to? Well, well, Ken, it's it's really a great question for, for us to have. We have the most wins because we have some of the best products on the market. And the reason why we have some of the best products, like our rods, for example, is we use our pros to help us develop those products. And no one knows better how to make a rod than the pros, and they're technique specific a lot of times. So each, each pro will pick technique. And we had great success with that back in the 80s. And we had guys like Rick Clun, Larry Nixon, Danny Brower, you know, George Cochran, Ken Cook, Jay Ellis, Dion, uh, Dion Hibden, uh, Davey Height, who's currently, you know, big Bassmaster guy, but these guys all helped us uh, develop rods that, they, that made us successful. They were the right rods for the product, and that really made a difference, which we have now with our Tattoo Elite Series with our current pros. You know, the first guy to use a Daiwa product and win a classic was uh, Bobby Murray back in 1978. But now I'm going to ask you a tough question, Kurt. Okay. What is a classic win worth to Daiwa in terms of sales for that product? Is it worth a 10% boost or a 50% boost, or roughly what, what does it mean? Well, I think it can be up as much as 20% increased, uh, depending on the person who's winning and the popularity, and people want to emulate that. They want to have the same success as that anger in the water, so that's why they're going to probably buy those rods from us. Well, good luck to your Daiwa pros in this Bassmaster Classic. Thank you. There you have it, folks. A lot of factors come into play when you're talking about maximizing the value of a Bassmaster Classic win. A lot has to do with which angler wins. A lot has to do with the type of bait involved. A lot has to do maybe with market saturation. But a Classic win is still an important thing for a lot of the companies here at the Bassmaster Classic Expo and in the bass market generally.